Roger, when we were talking uh, a while back, you said a, an interesting thing and you illustrated with yourself, there's a problem and you gave it, gave it a name and you called it managing sin. Right. A lot of Christians get together and all we do is we just manage our sin. Right. So I confess, you confess, we confess. So let's pray that we just won't do those things anymore. And good luck. See you next week. Right. So that's where I found myself of like, I love God so much. I know he has a calling on my life for ministry. I'm seeing him bear fruit out of that. At the same time, I'm managing sin. Um, I'm on my own, and now I'm talking to other people about it, but we have no power to help each other. Hmm. It's just like, yeah, we all stink. We're brave enough to admit it. Yeah, we're being real. Right. That's good. But we're not getting anywhere out of it. Yeah, right. And 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 sin's claws are just sinking deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. We're like, surely there's a way out. Yeah. So where it came for me mm -hmm. is that the effects of sin, and and to be honest, you know, it's it lust. Pride, anger, uh, those were the three things that I was losing the battle of managing. It was managing me more than so I was managing it. it. Yeah, sure. I knew there had to be an answer. Yeah. And so I just kind of put everything on hold. Hmm. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not interested in, in doing more ministry mm -hmm. while the inside of my heart is rotting out. So because until we get to the bottom of it, we are forced to be pretenders. Right. And I think all of us live in that tension of like who we know God wants us to be. Sure. And then who we really are. Yeah. And then Satan lies to us too and says, You're actually worse than you think you are. Mm. God's called me to worship leading at this point in my life in this sure. season, and it has been. That's a very visible and public platform. And so whenever my private life wasn't lining up, that, t mm. that tension was terrible mm. um, because I knew what I should be. I would imagine that, the, uh, but you talk about it, that it made you want to pull away from people for fear of being uh, exposed. If I'm scared of being found out, I'm going to very deliberately steer the conversation, my relationships in, into a place where I feel like it's, it's safe and no one's going to find out who I really am. Superficial. Right. That whole effort is exhausting. It is. Trying to navigate your relationships in a way where they don't find out the real you. Mm -hmm. And in my life, it came to a point where the sin wasn't just affecting me. Yeah. It was affecting other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fallout was destructive. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm stopping here. Something's yeah. got to give. So a year ago or so, you're backstage. I'm backstage. We're catching up. What's been going on? How's marriage? Babies, all that stuff. But you mentioned uh, a ministry that provided a way out, a door out of this cycle that so many Christians get caught in, the Kairos ministry. Talk about Kairos ministry. Kairos is discovering God's heart for me and for you to be free from sin and to walk in a powerful, uh, life-giving, loving way through life, uh, free from the burdens of guilt, shame, wounds, all that kind of stuff. And how it's done is so simple. It's by applying scripture, the promises of God to our life and praying through that. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, it's a ministry that really focuses on the Lord being your counselor. Right. So I went through counseling. I think biblical counseling is very beneficial. Um, what I enjoyed about this specifically is I didn't have to kind of vomit my own story and dredge up all my bad things about myself to anybody. Hmm. Sure. But I was just there, and the Lord brought up the things that he wanted to deal with. Hmm. We didn't have to talk about it. Well, we he already to, knows them all. He, he already knew it all, <laughs> and he, well, all he wanted to do is provide a doorway out. out. I mentioned to you that I had throughout my life been struggling with lust, with pride, with anger. Yeah. And I went into that knowing that I wanted to deal with that and hoping that God would free me from mm. those things. Yeah. And on the other side of it, I felt so free 
uh, and knew I was free because God's word had been applied to it and his Holy Spirit had shown me some really key things about how to, how to walk forward out of that. And to use the, the metaphor of the, the toolbox, uh, from what you described, yeah. they loaded your toolbox with some tools you didn't have right. that you can keep accessing. And they give you principles from the Bible yeah. of like, hey, here's the problem. Here's what the Bible says about it. Mm-hmm. And now right there where you're sitting, you can apply God's power through his, of his word on your life. Yeah. Just like, you know, the prayer of salvation is so simple, yeah. but yet it works and it's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. And so we just apply that those words of God and the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit's there prompting us with specific things in our life um, to use those principles that he gives us in the word to, uh, to help us out. I think a ministry like Kairos mm. is a must for every believer. Amen. Just like your car needs to tune up every mm. once in a while, we need to tune up spiritually. Mm-hmm. And you may not even know the tools that are out there yeah. to help you. Yeah. You know, one of, the, one of the, the quotes that I've heard at Kairos is, did Jesus save me from my sin? Hmm. Or did, is death going to save me from my sin? That's the thing that the enemy wants us to believe is that we're actually real and entangled in our sin forever yeah. until we die. Yeah. It's not true. This is a life-giving uh, event. I walked out feeling like 100 pounds lighter, and there were about 300 other people that attended the same event. I didn't know any of them. I didn't talk to them. Hmm. It was just me and God and them and God. But when we walked out, I knew this is an army of changed people. Right. And yes, it takes time and emo- it's emotional. Sure. But you walk out having a, a different and greater picture of God, mm-hmm. a true picture of yourself, mm-hmm. and you feel a pack of burdens taken off sure. you that you didn't even know existed. Mm-hmm. I think that we get used to carrying around burdens and wounds, and we just think that that's part of us. And the devil loves piling on that. Oh, yeah. And convincing us it could only ever be this way. Right. Nothing could be further from the truth. Right. You come out stronger, lighter, healthier. I know that the enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. Sure. And he, he plays the long game. Hmm. And we have something difficult happen, and sometimes we want to deal with it, and he'll say, it's not that big of a deal, sweep it under the rug. Uh, and so we do. You know, we think, man- we think... Managing sin again. Right, we think time heals all wounds. It doesn't. Mm. Those wounds just get managing deeper hurts, roots. Managing sins. Right, and so that's where uh, the Lord is so good to say, you know what, even though the enemy has a strategy... He's got the trump card, and and the enemy can't overcome the power of God and his ability to free us. Mm. Amen.